Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Jackie McCullough coming to you again and still talking about Christ in the crisis. Week 37 or the 37th time. And I'd like to talk about getting ready for the Christmas celebration. And it's talking about getting back to Christmas or returning to Christmas. Now, what on earth are you talking about, McCullough, getting back to Christmas, returning to Christmas? Well, we're in the season of Advent. It is a season that describes the preparation for and celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. It begins four Sundays before Christmas and ends on Christmas Eve. This is usually a time of what? Merrymaking for many, office parties, church gatherings, family gatherings, Christmas shopping, and preparing meals. This year, of course, all of these activities are drastically changed. Depression is plaguing our society. Discouragement is overpowering the believer and disappointment has overtaken our hopes and desires. This Christmas, in the pandemic is forcing many believers to return to the true meaning of Christmas. We're not going to spend time arguing about the birth date of Christmas as to whether he was really born in December or not, or was he born in April? What we do know historically, Jesus was born. Jesus lived, walked the streets of Galilee. Jesus was crucified, he died and was buried. He rose again, and he ever liveth and reigneth. Those are things that believers know and believers believe in. Even, even people who are not necessarily Christians, they do believe that Jesus existed. This is what we should return to, however. We should return to the, the message of the gospel, the reason why he came, the reason why he died, and the reason why he lives forever. So this pandemic for many of us has removed all the trappings and distractions and brought us to what really matters. So how should we prepare then? If, if all the trappings are gone and trappings, we meant all the busyness, all, all the things that we, we thought we had to do and must do in order to make it a Merry Christmas. If that's not happening the way we used to have it, how should the believer, how should the believer celebrate Christmas so that the unbeliever can perhaps get the message? The first thing is we have to worship him. Change the atmosphere of your house. Change the focus of the season and worship him. Put on the true Christmas carols. Sing the Christmas carols. Pray with your family share the Christmas story, even before Christmas day, begin to talk to people, talk to your, your family members and people around you about what Christmas is all about. In Matthew 2 verse 1 and 2 says, now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So here we have an example of people from another place, people from another country, people who followed this special star and came and asked, Where is he? Where is Jesus? We want to what? Worship him. Of course, you know, Mary worshiped the Lord. When the angel came and told her that, you know, she was going to have this son and his name shall be called Jesus and explained it to her. And then when she went and met with Elizabeth, a praise came out of her spirit. In a very difficult time, her pregnancy was not glorious to the eyes of natural man. She was not married. She was supposed to be a virgin. 
and, and, and getting married as a virgin. And now you are, you're pregnant. So her, her experience at this time was not something that she wanted everybody to know about. Yet she worshiped. A lot of things are happening to us that's not pleasant, challenging, uncomfortable. But this is the time we should worship. As Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit rejoice in the God of my salvation. Even though it was challenging, it was unprecedented. Come on, virgins don't get pregnant. Unprecedented, she still worshiped the Lord. The shepherds worshiped the Lord when the angel came and told him, told them rather that they will find the child, where they would find the child, the child would be wrapped up in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And when they went and saw it, they worshiped. Even the angels that made the announcement, they worshiped. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth and goodwill to all men. So the whole Christmas uh, uh, story is really laced with worship, adoration, giving God the glory for sending his son, even as a baby. So in spite of it all, let's comb away the discouragement. Let's comb away the things that we're, we're, we're frustrated about and bring back the real meaning of Christmas, taking Christmas back to what it really means. The next thing is to recognize him. You worship him and then you recognize him. In Luke 2, 27, uh, uh, Simeon was waiting for the birth of the Messiah, waiting for the Messiah to come. Why are you waiting for the Messiah to come? Because the Messiah is coming to bring peace on her earth, to bring consolation to a torn nation, a nation that has been from one, under one captivity to the other. And now Jesus is coming to bring the nation back into a relationship, a true relationship with God, peace and joy. And so when he saw the baby, he recognized, recognized who he really was, not what we want him to be, not a picture on the wall, not just, not just a cross around uh, our necks with, 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 with Jesus hanging on the cross. No, no, no. Not just someone who gave us money from our shopping club to go shopping. No. Recognize him for this pandemic is forcing us to focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. We're preparing for Christmas. Let's focus on Jesus. In all the other years, for many of us, the focus was everywhere else. You know, what are we going to get on Susie? What are we going to give Uncle Bob? Um, what, what are we going to give um, um, John John? It, all, all of that, all of that. What, what kind of meal? What kind of meal are we going to prepare? All of us are guilty of that. You know, who are we going to invite? Who are we going to visit? Get the airline ticket. We're going to visit grandma. All of that. All of that. And, and, and Jesus got lost in the sauce. The Christmas parties weren't about Jesus. Some of the family gatherings, Jesus' name was mentioned. Even when we went to church, we never really had, many of us, any, any, any um, program or Christmas program centered around Jesus. Some churches didn't even have a, a, a Christmas Eve or Christmas service. So all the years that we have had Christmas our way, the way we wanted it, the way we felt like it was going to give us joy and peace and happiness and laughter and good food and fellowship, that is now compromise. So now what am I going to do? Focus on Jesus. Recognize him. Simeon recognized him in Luke 2, 27, and I'm going to read verses 27 through 32. Here begins God's word. And he, which is Simeon, came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents, meaning Mary and Joseph, brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms, meaning Simeon, took up baby Jesus in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. In other words, this is all I've been living for. This is all I've been waiting for. Just waiting 
to, to embrace the Messiah, waiting to receive the Messiah, waiting to, to, to hold the Messiah. And is that what we are waiting for this Christmas? Are we disgruntled and frustrated? Can't wait. Can't wait for it to get over. Can't wait to get into the new year so we could get back to normal. No, don't be in such a hurry because we don't know exactly what tomorrow will bring. But in this Christmas season, if God spares our life, let us bring it back. Let's bring Christmas back. For the believer, let believers bring Christmas back to where it should be by recognizing. That's what Simeon did his whole life. He, he lived. He held on to life because he wanted to see the Messiah. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. In other words, I recognize him as being the savior the savior of our souls. That's the bottom line. This Christmas, recognize him as the savior of your soul. Focus on that. He says, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Worship him and recognize. Who is he? He's the savior of the world. Who is he? He's the one who saves us from our sins. Who is he? He's the one that put us in the right relationship with God. Who is he? He's the one that came down from heaven just for me and just for you so that we will be in a relationship with God and not separated from God forever. Recognize that. Keep that there so that your celebration. You see, when you have, when you have celebration for someone's birthday, you, you focus on them. People get up and say so many things about them. You know, I've known them for some, for a number of years, and 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 I know I know what they have done, what they have accomplished. I, I I know I know how they 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 live their lives. All of that, all of that testimony, acknowledgement, recognition. Well, that's what we should be doing this Christmas that we have forgotten to do. Many many gatherings, people forgot to even pray. Many people did not go to church Christmas Eve or Christmas morning because that's, that's tradition. Oh, we don't need to do any of that. That, that doesn't even make sense. I mean, come on. Now, now the COVID is here. You got your wish. Many people didn't want, didn't want to have anything to do with church. Even believers around Christmas, they were busy cooking, busy shopping, busy fellowshipping, just busy. But now we can't be that busy. And if we do, it is at the expense of our health. God has us right there. Hey, remember me? Hey, you remember how much I love you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hey, it's my birthday. It's my day. Hey recognizing him, worshiping him, and number two, recognize him. And then the third thing I'd like to leave with you as we prepare differently, bringing Christmas back, bringing Christmas back, sharing our love with others. God so loved that he gave. This is a season to share our love with others. We may not have it like we used to, we may not be able to spend like we used to. Christmas co uh, commercially was a big money maker for the retail stores. People spend lots of money. Uh, the, the travel agent business boomed during the holidays. People traveling all over the world, thousands of miles to visit friends or just to go to someplace different. So this is a time when we did a lot of things, when people did a lot of activity, moving and going and hustling and bustling. But were we really sharing our love? You know, this is a time that we're used to also giving gifts. The pandemic now forces us to look at giving differently. First, we must be a witness to the world, meaning we must share our faith. Share your faith is a form of giving and loving this Christmas. 
Matthew 28, 19, the word of the Lord says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So share, share your faith. It's a form of sharing your love. You, there are people out there that are waiting to receive the message, especially this time when people are discouraged and hopeless. We share the message and that brings them hope, joy to the world. The Lord has come. The second thing is we must share our resources. There are ways and means. We may not be able to bring a lot of people together. We may not be able to have all the guests that we used to have. But share, share your resources. Our, our youth department, you know, we, we usually give them wonderful gifts. We pick a name. Everybody in the church picks a name. And it, it's not, the, you know, their children. People pick names of children who are, who are, who are in foster care. People pick names of children who, who are there in the church. And they get tons of gifts. And then they give it to the neighbors. But this time, we're not giving out gifts. The children are going to give gifts. This pandemic brought it right back to what giving is all about. They are going to take the gifts to the nursing homes. They're going to take gifts to the, to the frontline workers, the children. Because now we're seeing things so differently. That's what the pandemic is all about. And I'm supporting them 100%. They're going to take the gifts. They've been given permission. They've adopted a particular local nursing home and they're going to go in there and make a difference because this pandemic forced us to see what love and giving is all about. It's not greedily and lustfully grabbing. Oh my God, oh my God. It's doing what, what pleases God. God so loved that he gave the only son of its kind. So this Christmas, the pandemic really forces us to look at how to prepare for Christmas. And then, you know, it, 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 Jesus said it in Matthew 25, 36 through 40. I'm going to read it for you. Here's God's word. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king, Jesus, shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. So far the scripture. We prepare gifts for children whose loved ones are in prison. That's another way. You can't get to it. You, 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 you go on, on, on the internet and buy. You can go on the internet and give to the right kind of cause. And the last thing is, Share Christ's love. Because, you know, you can give and not, and not love. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us that you can be a philanthropist. You can give money. You can give time. You can give talent and yet not be loving. And it says so right here in the scripture. 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, meaning love. I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And the nothing there means in the eyes of God. To somebody, you look good. Oh, they'll big you up and give you a certificate and even put you on, on, on television and interview you. And you go on, on the Internet and you get a lot of, you know, you get a lot of um, um, responses. 
20,000 people, 500,000 people because you gave. But that doesn't mean that you're loving. It doesn't mean that you care. It just means that you can, you can give things and not give of yourself. So prepare this Christmas differently. Prepare for this Christmas differently by worshiping, by knowing who you're worshiping, acknowledging him, by, by looking at who Jesus really is in the Bible and who he is in your, in your life and who he wants to be. And then not only that, but, but share. Share in several ways. Share your time, share the gospel, share your resources, and share your love. This is what I mean by getting back to Christmas. So one of my favorite Christmas carols, because, you know, we have a lot of carols that we sing every Christmas. But this is one of my favorites, as I said before. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Jesus Christ the Lord. For he alone is worthy. For he alone is worthy. He alone is worthy. His name is Jesus Christ the Lord, the one who came to save. Won't you think about how you should bring Christmas back into your life, into your home, into your community? Because somehow, somehow along the way, Christmas got lost. We had the name, but we never had the reason. So let's bring it right back. He was born to die, to save, to redeem, to deliver, to bring peace, to bring joy, to bring direction, to bring hope, so that you and I, even in a pandemic, can live differently. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for, for teaching us how we can do things differently to please you, to focus on you, so that in all of that, we can also get the benefits. And the benefits are immeasurable. Peace in the midst of a COVID. Joy in the midst of sorrow. Hope when we don't see anything in sight. Help when we feel helpless. Power when we feel strengthless. Thank you, God. Thank you for giving us the grace to take back Christmas out of the hands of selfishness and greed and busyness and put it right back where it belongs. Oh, come, let us adore him. Help us to sing the song and to also practice what it teaches. We're going to take Christmas back. Give us the grace to do so, so that our children, the next generation, will know what to do when Christmas comes around again. In Jesus' name, amen. Please let us know if these exhortations help you, especially now during the time of Christmas. We're only a few days away and people are already preparing to be depressed. But I pray that this exhortation lifted your spirit and gave you the ability to celebrate Christmas differently this year. God bless you.